Lord's darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the nation shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will, will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, This grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him serve.
deliver the poor who cries out in distress and the oppressed who has no He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. and violence and dear shall their blood be in his sight long may he live and may there be given to him gold from Arabia may prayer be made for him always and may they bless him all the day May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick even on the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain like grass up on the earth. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who, uh, who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed in a, in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country 
by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. plain gold I bring to crown him again king forever ceasing never over us all to reign Its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering doom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, thou with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect
to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Happy New Year's. Are you ready for things to get back to normal yet? Yes. Are your decorations down? We're taking ours down tomorrow. No more Christmas tree, no more carols, vacations are coming to a close. Days off in the middle of a week that throw everything off. I know my oldest starts school back Monday, and so the new year is here, and it's back to business as usual. And I guess it's all just part of the journey, right? These cycles we go through year after year. But Christmas and New Year's, they will wear you out, won't they? I mean, I'm kind of glad to be back to a normal schedule, a routine, back to business as usual. No more Christmas. Now it's Epiphany. And so now we have the wise men, right? Where did they come from? Who are these guys? And how wise are they, really? No offense. No offense. <laughs> I mean, some people joke that they weren't that wise if they had to stop and ask Herod for directions. <laughs> or if they were women, they would have stopped sooner and asked for directions, so they would have made it there on time. And when they did go to Herod, they asked them where they could find the new king of the Jews. They asked this of Herod, the self-imposed king of the Jews. How wise is that? Well, we don't know a lot about these characters that make it into our nativity sets 12 days later. They were thought to be kings at one point, so we do get that great Christmas carol out of it. But now, instead, we call them magi, the same word we get magician from. And the best that our scholarship can tell us is that these guys were stargazers. They were from the east. They weren't Jews, but they were probably from Persia. Maybe even they were Zoroastrians. But what we do know is that they studied the stars, okay? It seems that they were a cross between astronomers and astrologers, sort of a half-scientist, half-holy man kind of deal going on. It's kind of neat. But their life's work was studying the stars. That's what they did. That was their occupation in today's language. They were just being who they were, being who they were, who they were called to be. And then this great thing happened. You see, I think that's the whole point. They were just being who they were. They were doing what they were doing, what they were called to be. They weren't Jews looking for a Messiah. They weren't expecting to find God as a little baby. It's not like in Luke where the shepherds saw an angel and they said, your Lord and Savior has come. No, they were just following a star, a star that they knew <coughs> signified that the king of the Jews had been born. Maybe they followed stars all the time. We don't know. But in my life, their, but in my mind, their life had been building to this point. It was like the normal course of action for them to follow this unique star. You see, the great thing about the wise men for me is that I don't think they were even intentionally looking for God. I don't think they were. But they found them. They might not have been looking for God, but they found him. This reminds me of spiritual autobiographies. I don't know if you've ever done one of these things, but I'll sort of explain what they are. If you've ever been in EFM, you know them. And we had to do them all the time, it seems like, when we were in discernment process for seminary. I mean, I got sick of them, but they're a good tool, so I'll share with you what they are. You write about your relationship with God from the beginning. Basically, you, you write about how did you first come to know God? How has your perception changed of God, you know, over your years? How do you see God now? And it might seem strange to do this, and at first it really is. But they're pretty neat if you do them over a few years. You can look back and look at your life and see how your life has changed, how your perceptions of God have changed, how your perceptions of yourself have changed. And you see certain events in your life so differently and how those events changed your life. All the things that I thought were so heavy and burdensome, now they're just things that happened a while ago. Things that in a way I wish I hadn't done, but in another way, if I hadn't have done them, I wouldn't be who I was today. So you catch my drift. <laughs> Our lives seem to be building towards something. And it's sort of what these spiritual autobiographies do. They show us that we're all on a journey. 
all of us on a different journey. That's the wise men for me. They were on their own journey, doing their own thing, and then something remarkable happened, something fantastic. They met God. They met Jesus. I think sometimes we do intentionally look for God. I imagine many of you came to church this morning because you are seeking an experience, a communion with God. I mean, sometimes we desire to be next to God so badly. We want to follow and be with God. But what about the other times? The other times that we're not intentionally looking for God. God is still there, no doubt. But maybe not at the forefront of our lives. Instead, maybe he's just sort of in the background. And we're doing what we're doing, living how we live, business as usual. You see, I think that's what the wise men tell us. That if we're doing what we're called to do, we will find God. God will be known to us. To use the epiphany language, God will be made manifest to us. And not just to some of us, but all of us. God reveals himself even to those of us that maybe aren't really consciously looking for God. When we're just going about life, business as usual. That's when we often meet God. Maybe like those magi from so long ago, our first calling is simply to be who we were made to be. It could be in Kroger standing in line, at the gas station, at the pumps, or at a Starbucks having coffee, maybe just sitting still and looking up at the beautiful sky. You see, Jesus is really everywhere. He's as near as your neighbor and as far as the deepest, darkest recesses of the cosmos. Look around you. You will see him. You will experience him. And that's what epiphany is. It's those moments on your journey that overwhelm you with joy, make you pause and thank God. And yes, they might even change your life. So I wanted to give you an illustration or an example of an epiphany. And there are plenty, but I think they're pretty personal, really. And I feel like telling someone else's epiphany, well, it's not my place. So that means I have to share mine <laughs> with you. It's an epiphany that happened to me, a very important one to me. And I'm not saying this because I'm so special. Trust me, that's not the point. Instead, I'm trying to make the point that for so long, we've held up these wise men that they only could have this grand experience, this meeting of God. What I'm saying is that you can have this experience. You can meet God, and you, and you, and you, we can all meet God. So here's my epiphany. This was back when I was in sales. Before seminary, I worked for a company called Ecolab. It was a good job, a good company, and I was in charge of managing a district here in the southeast that covered parts of five states. So I traveled a lot, all the time, really. It's called windshield time. You know that term? Had a lot of windshield time. Well, I was heading on I-75, heading south toward Atlanta. And I'd been having nudges that I might want to go to seminary. And I was involved in my church, but I still wasn't sure if it was the call that I was hearing or something else. I had, I'd have to quit a good job. I'd have to ask my wife to quit her teaching job. We'd have to sell our house. We'd have to move someplace and make no money. Quite frankly, it wasn't really that appealing. <laughs> so I'm driving down the interstate, business as usual, thinking about the next sales call I had to make. And then suddenly, in my mind's eye, I saw myself behind an altar, wearing vestments, holding up a priest host, you know, the big wafer. That was it. It lasted maybe two seconds, but that's all it took. It was terribly powerful for me. I had to pull off the side of the road <laughs> because it shook me up so much. And when I got to the side of the road, I just had to sit there. I was clutching the steering wheel, tears coming down my face. I must have looked like a crazy person, <laughs> but it shook me to my core. And I doubt I'll never have another experience like that one again. But you talk about an aha moment, an epiphany, a real life epiphany. 
It got my attention. I met God that day. In the normal routine of my life, along the journey of my life that had led me to that place, all those decisions I had made, good and bad, You see, all those things that made me reluctant to follow who I was supposed to be were seen differently after that. And it was worth the risk. It has obviously had a huge impact on my life, and that's what meeting God does. It impacts your life. You see, we can all be wise men. We can all be wise women. And meeting God can change your life. So, as we get back to normal, back to business as usual, and you travel your own journey and who you are, I hope you keep your ears and your eyes open and hold on to that steering wheel because it's my experience that just like the Magi, you'll meet God along the way. Hopefully you won't be going 80 miles an hour down an interstate. (laughs) Happy New Year. Amen. of the people are form four found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. This morning we give thanksgivings for the work and ministry of the St. John's Altar Guild for the work and ministry of the Church of the Nativity in Fort Oglethorpe, for the flowers in the chapel given to the glory of God and in memory of Myron and Silva Weiss, and for the flowers in the church given in remembrance of Joyce Wilson Ramsey and Archibald S. Ramsey, and in thanksgiving for Isabel and Olivia. Lord, in your mercy, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. This morning we offer prayers for Florence Bailey, Samantha Carruthers, Bill and Trudy Gardner, Cynthia Googe, Martin Hunt, Kimberly Curtis, Katie McMillan, Corrine Patrick, Libby Reed, Jeannie Scott, Brian Tillery, John Walker, Dan White, Bo Willian, Virginia Wolliver, Amber Coker, Michael Coker, Kristen Farley, and Britt Johnson. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for those who are serving our country in the military, especially for those deployed in Afghanistan, as we pray for the civilians of Afghanistan and for all victims of war. And we pray in remembrance of the American soldier who died this week, David I. Lyon. We also pray for our own deceased, Robert C. Bannon, Dorothy Louise Coleman, 
Christina Gregory, Laura Ann Root. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Yeah, you can be seated. <laughs> Wel welcome to everyone today. Special welcome to any visitors here with us and anybody in a blue blazer. Welcome. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory, in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven. gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.